Happy holidays, everybody. And Tony here with my thoughts on the three-part Power Rangers Zeo episodes, There's No Business Like Snow Business, which aired on Fox Kids from May 13, 1996 to May 15 of that same year. This was directed and written by Douglas Sloan. What I noticed about this particular three-part episode was that it garnered a lot of vitriol from the Tomberly shippers, mainly due to the Dear John letter that Kimberly wrote to Tommy, as well as forcing the whole Tomcat agenda on viewers' throats. Granted, there were some viewers that were rather cool with Tommy and Kimberly moving on from each other while having Tommy and Cat move closer as a couple, while the hardcore Tom Early shippers, let alone people who love good romance writing, found themselves completely frustrated with what There's No Business Like Snow Business had to offer, especially in the very first part, let alone the next two parts. The vitriol didn't just stop with this particular three-parter, but it was also projected onto the holiday special, A Season to Remember, and I will gladly talk about ways that I could improve the problems of that particular holiday episode because after one year of taking a look at it and critiquing it, I am still not satisfied with my thoughts on it and the ways that I could address the problems and to improve them. But that's a totally different story. For now, I'd like to focus my attention on the three part, there's no business like snow business, and address the problems I do have with this three parter. But before I address the problems, a few positive assets about this particular three parter. And mind you, there will be seven positive aspects that I liked about this and seven negative aspects that I did not like about this particular three-parter. So starting with the positives, there are the winter scenes on top of the mountains. Now I am a big sucker for winter scenes, especially when it comes to shots taking place in winter. And of course, I do love watching snow, whether it's in animation or in live action. And the locations chosen for this particular three-parter were absolutely beautiful to watch. And this leads into my second point regarding the snowy landscapes. All of the snowboarding, skiing, and extreme sports scenes taking place in the snow. It's really great just seeing the likes of Cat giving chase to the cogs, or even Tommy and Billy going snowboarding, let alone having Tommy, Billy, and Heather going on a snowboarding adventure, and even having Tommy and Heather, as well as Billy and Cat, going on their snowmobiles to trek around the snowy landscapes. Those are definitely exhilarating moments that I can take away from this particular three-parter, and it's definitely left me breathless. Just totally breathless watching all of the characters just have a lot of intense moments with their snowboards or their skis or even their snowmobiles and just do so with high octane action and a whole lot of velocity to boot. I would also like to highlight that this is the three-parter that showed Kat Hillard at one of her most capable. Yes, she has come so far during her short tenure on Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Season 3, especially since she replaced Kimberly after she had to go around the world in this international gymnastics competition alongside her German coach. It took time for Kat to come into her own, especially given her start being Rita Repulsa's minion before she started regaining her memories of what she was like as a very young and innocent girl and finally joining the Power Rangers as the new Pink Ranger before becoming a permanent fixture as the Pink Zia Ranger, she's definitely come a long way. And whether she fought the cogs unmorphed or morphed, Kat definitely proved herself to be an absolutely reliable, focused, 
determined, and really fine Pink Ranger, and an overall fine combatant who combined power, speed, and finesse all the way through to make her stand out not only as the Pink Zeal Ranger, but also a really fine combatant who managed to stand her ground and do so with agility and finesse, thus making her win in my eyes. And since Bulk and Skull are also in this particular three-parter, I do love their interactions, whether it's with each other or even with their superior, Lieutenant Stone. There is not a dull moment that Bulk and Skull have, and every time they're on screen, it's always a fun one, even with Lieutenant Stone. And I also have to give mad props to Paul Schreer's and Jason Narvey's superb interpersonal chemistry, and lest I forget about Greg Bullock, who proved himself to be a fine actor who can work really well off of Paul Schreer's and Jason Narvey's comedic antics, especially with Greg Bullock's overly stern, yet quite hammy portrayal of Lieutenant Jerome Stone. And of course, since this is Power Rangers, you can always expect that the monster fights are going to be exciting, especially when the Rangers morph up, suit up, and even call upon their Zords to do battle with the Monsters of the Week. And the Monsters of the Week are RoboCupid and Defoliator. Yes, I will have a lot more to talk about them much later, but for now, the fights between the main five Rangers and the two Monsters of the Week are absolutely thrilling, especially especially when you combine the fine and absolutely exciting fight choreography, even though this was based on the Japanese Sentai footage of Jorik Sentai Orenja, and even combined with some American-only Ranger footage, it's still such a sight to behold in Power Rangers lore, and I always keep telling myself that these are the moments I keep coming back to all the fight scenes that are so full of tension, so full of action, and so full of high-octane excitement. And it always leaves me on the edge of my seat every time I see these rangers morph up, suit up, and just do battle with these monsters, whether using the power cannon or even using their megazords and even winning in the end. The penultimate asset about there's no business like snow business is Heather Thompson, played by Sarah Brown, who was also well known for her portrayal as Caitlin Starr from VR Troopers. She was definitely a fine addition to the cast. I do wish there could have been a lot more done with Heather Thompson, aside from her being the extreme snowboarder specialist. But I'll get to that a little bit later. But for now, her presence was thoroughly welcome. She had good chemistry with Tommy, Billy, and Kat. And I do wish that she had also been a stronger ally to the Rangers. She has this ebullient and spunky personality that Sarah Brown portrayed perfectly. And she's just someone I still manage to enjoy and even feel for. But don't worry, the ways in which Heather Thompson should have been improved will be addressed much later. Finally, there is Kat, consistently consoling Tommy about his breakup with Kimberly, or more appropriately, Kimberly's breakup with him. And like I said, I will definitely address the Dear John debacle. But for now, aside from Kat being a capable, agile, and absolutely fine combatant, who combines finesse with power, Kat has proven herself time and time again that she is a good and attentive and loyal friend, not only towards Tommy, but also her fellow rangers. She does have a naturally good heart, and she demonstrates that with Tommy, showing concern for him, and even making sure 
that he lives his best life possible, not only as a ranger, but also as a person. And that's the same attitude that she carries towards the people that she cares for. So Kat definitely not only has come a long way as a pink ranger, but also as a person and a very good friend to everybody. Now that I address the main assets that made there's no business like snow business work, let's get on to the main gist of this video as I deal with the issues that there's no business like snow business has. Starting off with of course, the obvious Dear John letter written by our very own Kimberly Ann Hart. But before I discuss this, I would love to credit one other YouTuber who made a brilliant video essay about why the Tomcat ship did not work in the slightest. And I have to give DC Marvel Girl 1997 a whole lot of kudos for addressing the issues that Tomcat has in her video essay, Cat Hillard and Tommy Oliver, a case study in how not to write romance. And I will insert the link to her video on the description box below so you can check it out. She's made a lot of brilliant points as to why the Dear John letter was problematic, let alone the contention she also had with Tomcat as a ship. And she did so with eloquence and I really thank her so much for the inspiration. I also have to give a few shout outs to a couple of Ranger fans, such as the movie fan, for also expressing his total disgust with the Tomcat ship, as well as the Dear John letter. And of course, I do share their pain. Now we get on to the main meat and potatoes of this, the Dear John letter. It's pretty obvious to see that the Dear John letter was completely problematic from the off. You might think that it started off with Kimberly stating how much she was enjoying her time competing in all of these gymnastics tournaments. But the fact that she would dare say that she always liked Tommy as a best friend and a brother just made me think, what? After all three seasons of Tommy and Kimberly having this totally romantic relationship with each other as boyfriend and girlfriend, and even starting off with Kimberly having a crush on him, and even trying to find the best in him, even in his darker days. She still sees him as if though he were her brother and her platonic best friend. No, they in fact kissed in the second part of the green candle, thus affirming their relationship as boyfriend and girlfriend. And their relationship blossomed from the first season all the way up to the third season. And Tommy was still supportive of all of Kimberly's endeavors, and they still had each other's backs, no matter what the situation was. On top of that, Tomberly was also the first Ranger romance that many viewers tuned into when they finally saw Tommy and Kimberly lock lips with each other in a kiss, and even affirmed that Tomberly was going to be the ship that Ranger fans were going to live and die on. Another aspect about the Dear John letter that pissed me off was that this made Kimberly unintentionally insensitive toward Tommy. It's as if she said that everything that she and Tommy endured together did not matter, even when he was losing his way with Rita Repulsa, even when he was losing his initial Green Ranger powers, even when he came back as the new White Ranger, even when they were in a spell caused by one of the monsters of the week in the second season, even when everything was going to heck and back for them, they still had each other. So to say that Kimberly found someone and just mainly regarded her relationship with Tommy as nothing more than platonic was not only horribly done, but it also made her unintentionally insensitive and totally out of character, let alone someone who didn't really have enough compassion to understand the bond that she and Tommy truly had. And this also leads to another problem with the Dear John letter. Yes, there was fanfare when Kimberly was given a send-off from the third part of A Different Shade of Pink from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Season 3. But this Dear John letter just tore up that fanfare away and just tore it up to be nothing more than a sad little footnote. That's it. 
And that also pissed off DC Marvel Girl 1997 because of how disrespectful the Dear John letter was not only to Tommy and Kimberly as a couple, but also toward the Tomberly fans. Yes, I know I'm looking at this from the Tomberly fans' perspective, but come on, Tommy and Kimberly had three seasons, three seasons to grow together to grow not only individually, but also as a couple, as they became close with each other. They saw each other's good sides and bad sides and did not flinch. And that is why people are still rooting for Tom Burley to this day. And the way the Dear John letter handled it was completely devoid of respect, not only for Kimberly the character, but I'm pretty sure Amy Jo Johnson, as well as Jason David Frank as Tommy, let alone Catherine Sutherland as Cat Hillard. Overall, the Dear John letter was meant to state that all that development, all that chemistry that Tommy and Kimberly established from all three seasons of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers felt like it was for naught. It felt like it was completely wasted and this also showed right there that it was a total retcon to the beauty, the growth, and the strength that Tommy and Kimberly established as a couple for three freaking seasons. Therefore, the Dear John letter can find itself burning in ashes all the way up to the pits of Lord Zed's, let alone Master Vile's underworld domain. The second issue I have with There's No Business Like Snow Business also correlates to my first issue, and that is forcing Cat to be the rebound girl to Tommy. I argued that Tomcat could work in a different scenario, but when you add in the Dear John letter to the mix, you essentially disseminate the strong relationship that Tommy and Kimberly have, and one that functions so well in favor of Cat being this rebound girl, and to make Kimberly seem like she was just nothing more than a distant past footnote. Yes, I understand that both Tommy and Cat had similar experiences. They both knew what it was like to be manipulated by Rita Repulsa's machinations. They knew what it was like to turn against their allies and friends, and therefore have their allies and friends welcome them back after realizing the horrible things that they've done. And they both had that transformation from being a pawn in Rita Repulsa's schemes to being full-time heroes, let alone full-time rangers dedicated to saving the world. I understand that. However, just because Tommy and Kat had those similarities did not mean that they were going to be easily compatible. In fact, what made Tomberly work in my eyes was just how completely different Tommy and Kimberly were. Tommy did start off with this path toward becoming this villainous pawn, but it was thanks to his friends and allies that he was able to do the right thing and therefore fight along the side of good. Kimberly was always someone who saw the best in everybody and who always saw the best, especially in Tommy, not only because she fancied him, but because throughout everything that they've been through, she always knew that he has something inside of him that makes him shine and she sees through that so well. And it's also thanks to Kimberly's compassion, as well as her people skills, that make her shine so well as the original Pink Ranger. And she and Tommy complement each other perfectly, especially considering that Tommy has all the power in his moves, and Kimberly the finesse and agility, thus making themselves to be a fine power couple. With Tomcat, yes, it's a decent pairing, but the fact that it took a Dear John letter to break up Tommy and Kimberly as a couple, and then Kat trying to do everything she can to make Tommy happy and make sure that he doesn't end up being so jaded is rather shaky. And it also makes me realize that if Tomberly still kept on going strong, even with the long distance relationship, perhaps Cat could have a better chance with another ranger. 
why not have her with Jason Lee Scott, i.e. the original Mighty Morphin Red Ranger and the second Gold Zeo Ranger? I believe that Kat deserved a lot better than her forced relationship with Tommy. Yes, on paper, it's meant to make Tommy move on from Kimberly after she broke up with him, but the way that was done was totally unsatisfactory, as well as having Kat being forced to be the rebound girl was just totally uncalled for. And it also felt completely forced. And the reason why I chose Kat to be with Jason is pretty much the same reason why Tommy and Kimberly were meant to be together. And it's not just because it's the whole Sixth Ranger and Pink Ranger being together, i.e. Tommy during his Green Ranger and White Ranger tenure, and Kimberly during her first three seasons at the Pink Ranger, as well as having Jason as the second Gold Zero Ranger, and Kat being the Pink Zero Ranger. It's more than just that. It's because of their opposites and how they attract, especially when you have Kat's grace and classiness being a total complement to Jason's virility and strength. That would have worked. That would have been great. That would have also meant that Kat and Jason could have found themselves dating and therefore be a much better alternative to what we've been receiving with Tomcat. At the end of the day, there are better alternatives for Kat Hillard to find herself in a relationship romantically with. As for Tomcat, I was never feeling it, and even if I tried to like it, I just could not bring myself to thoroughly commit myself to this ship after having its agenda being forced down my throat. Although I did like the fight scenes between the rangers and the monsters, this third issue I had was just how disjointed the distribution of the Monsters of the Week are, which also contributed to the padding and dragging of making this a three-part episode. We have RoboCupid making people falling in love with machines, and Defoliator sucking the whole plant's energy through intense heat. It's already pretty much overkill when you have two main monsters trying to ruin the day while the rangers save the day trying to battle these two separate monsters. And sometimes they feel like they diverge from the main snow elements. And I get that they work as diverging elements from what was going on at the snowy mountains. However, in this case, having two monsters in the same three-parter feels like it's the classic case of too many cooks spoiling the broth and it also didn't help that the Machine Empire thought that having two monsters trying to take over the world would just make their plan being mobilized even further, when the results were very mixed all the way through. As I stated before, while the monster fights were fun, exciting, and epic, how RoboCupid and Defoliator were distributed throughout the episode left a lot to be desired, and they could have been used in other episodes, let alone other standalone episodes, especially not to muddle along the main plot of Kimberly's breakup with Tommy. When all is said and done, RoboCupid and Defoliator could have been in separate episodes, although their presence was pretty much welcome to give the Rangers a challenge, but in There's No Business Like Snow Business's case, it was terrible timing. You might have recognized that I did like Heather Thompson's presence in this three-parter. However, that's also kind of a problem because she definitely had wasted potential as a character. All she was left to be was one of Tommy's rebound love interests before Kat came into the mix. And while she did fancy Tommy, she could have also had a good relationship with Billy because after Tommy and Kat had to step aside to morph into their ranger suits, it was Billy that Heather was staying alongside with. And I'm pretty sure that Billy and Heather could have not only been friends first, but also had been a stronger couple. And what did we get with Heather? Heather's still trying to establish a bond with Tommy, which was clearly not going to work because of his ranger duties. And what's even worse is that thanks to the newfound trust that Heather had with Tommy, Kat, and Billy, they could have been at least honest with her about what was going on, and probably she could have been an ally. But what did they do? They still kept it all a secret 
thus leaving poor Heather in the dark. And this also made me feel even sorry for not only Heather, but also for Sarah Brown as an actress, because I feel that Heather could have been an interesting ally for the Zeal Rangers. She's got spunk, she's got personality, and she has a whole lot of flair than many of the other allies present in Power Rangers Zeo. In fact, Heather Thompson could have been very useful as a physical coordinator, let alone someone who can help the Rangers get into totally great shape, especially when fighting against all of the monsters and demons and other horrible creatures that the Machine Empire has in store for the Zeo Rangers. She could have been absolutely reliable, but as she was, her potential as a character was totally wasted. And it's a huge shame that Heather Thompson could have been a great ally to the main Zeo Rangers. Then you get what would happen if you combine all the problems with the Dear John letter with everything that made the three-part episodes, there's no business like snow business stink. And that is all the melodrama and poor decisions. Having Kimberly break up with Tommy with that terrible excuse of a letter is one poor decision. Leaving Heather in the dark, not knowing what the heck is going on, and without that much trust being established is another poor decision, not only on Tommy's part, but I would also argue the other main ranger's part although it's meant to establish that their identities be kept a secret. But still, the terrible decisions made in these three episodes, as well as for the sake of having teen melodrama being put into the mix, are just what made the three-part there's no business like snow business stink in my eyes. And it also leads into trying to assuage Kimberly's breakup with Tommy in these three episodes, but failing to recognize its impact on the story and the viewers. And that's also the issue that I've been having with this Dear John letter crap. Viewers tuning in to Mighty Morphin Power Rangers are not stupid. They know what the heck's going on, and they can follow through the storyline quite well, especially with focused eyes and ears. It's clear to see that Tommy and Kimberly had this well-established relationship and they were always going to be by each other's sides through thick and thin. The entirety of There's No Business Like Snow Business wants to make us, the viewers, forget what was going on between Tommy and Kimberly. And that is completely unforgivable and horribly paced because as DC Marvel Girl 1997 stated, Kimberly would never do something this callous to Tommy. In fact, she should have been upfront with him in person rather than the stupid Dear John letter. It's making me think that the writers just did not care how impactful, let alone how grand and multidimensional Tommy's and Kimberly's relationship was during all three seasons of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. It felt like it was just all for naught and they just did not even bother to give it the proper fanfare that it truly deserved. Yes, the montage was quite nice, but it was not enough to assuage those wounds, let alone to further heal from those terrible, terrible mistakes that not only the writers made, but also Kimberly made in the show. Finally, the biggest issue with there's no business like snow business. Having it being a three-parter is a completely terrible idea because there are occasions where the story padded, where the story just went on for far too long than just three episodes, let alone three parts, and there was just so much being dragged on and on without much fanfare. And speaking of dragging on, how about the Rangers getting quite complacent with their initial victory against the Foliator, only to return with a vengeance and wreak more havoc, and even make Tommy lose his chances with a new love interest, when I think that Heather should have been with Billy in the first place? That is the big salt to this wound that I've had with there's no business like snow business. The padding, the plotting, the needless melodrama, and the needlessly stupidly horrible decisions 
that some of the characters have made just made this episode sink so low. And all for the sake of Kimberly breaking up with Tommy and Tommy finding someone else to be his girlfriend. Only for Heather to just walk out on him and never be seen again. And for Tommy and Kat to be finally together. Although the wounds of the Dear John letter will never heal the viewers, let alone the wounds that this three-parter ended up acquiring. Overall, I've had very conflicted feelings with There's No Business, like Snow Business, parts one to three. It's not a completely terrible set of episodes, but the terrible decisions made by some of the characters, as well as Zio's problems of going one step forward with its change of suits, and several steps backwards in terms of character development and some story elements just made everything about there's no business like snow business fall. And like I said, it's not a terrible episode, not in the slightest, but it did have some really bad moments to begin with, but at least it was counterbalanced by some moments where I thought where it was okay. It may not be the worst that the Power Rangers had to offer, but for what happened with the Dear John letter, let alone forcing the Tomcat agenda into a lot of viewers' throats. It's something that many a Tomberly shipper, let alone writers of good romance, can never, ever overlook. And for those of you who caught There's No Business Like Snow Business, what'd you think of it? Did you feel like the Dear John letter and the whole forced Tomcat agenda were what really made you turned off by this episode? Did you still like these three sets of episodes regardless? Or did you feel like this three-parter was not really meant for you? Please comment below and let me know. Well, that's it for my thoughts on the three-part episodes. There is no business like Snow Business from Power Rangers Zio. Tune in much later for the problems I've had with a season to remember and the ways I would fix that really terrible and downright below mediocre holiday episode. So until then, happy holidays, everybody.